Evening folks and welcome back again for another quick video and tonight I'm going to show you uh, some interesting le vintage electronics uh, the mercury vapor rectifier I uh, bought a load off eBay recently for a project which I'm planning to do in the winter so um, I've just been playing around with them and see if I can get these things to glow and uh, well, just wanted to share with you some interesting thoughts about these uh, interesting bits of vintage electronics anyway Without further ado, let's uh, get everything set up and we'll go to the workbench and show you all about them. So the question is, what are mercury vapour rectifiers? Well, basically back in the old days before they had one of these, which is a typical silicon diode, they used to use these, which are gas-filled electron tubes which is basically equivalent to what we would normally call a diode and these type of things were used in high voltage supplies and they convert uh, AC to DC they rectify the AC and the, this particular one is an 872A uh, this is quite a heavy duty industrial type of mercury vapor rectifier and was often used in um, three phase supplies now, apparently, according to the data sheet, this thing's rated at 10 kV, uh, probably well over an amp, so it's pretty industrial. Uh, so I actually bought a load of these, and I've got a whole box load down here. Now, these are actually Chinese ones, and the one over here in the box, which you can't see, is actually a new old stock um, 872A from from the United States, so that is probably an original um, 872. And I have actually fired that one up, and it seems to be all right. Now I've got this one here, and the reason why I put it on this on the workbench is I put for two twofold. See if it all works, which um, it does appear to do at the moment. Um, it's actually on. I've actually got the heater on, and it's actually been cooking for a while. These valves are quite interesting because before, before you use them, you have to let them warm up. Um, they've got mercury, as hence the name mercury vapor. And when you when you get one of these um, before it's warmed up, it's uh, you can see all the little flecks of mercury. So uh, it's not so it's not so um, health and safety uh, positive, so to speak, in, in this day and age. Uh, so you you have to be careful not to smash one of them because obviously the mercury is uh, quite toxic. Um, so. As I said, these things um, you do need to let them. Uh, you need to you do need to allow them to warm up before you use them. And uh, once they once they um, <clears throat> once they uh, are connected into a into a power supply, uh, they do glow quite a nice, uh, pretty purple colour, which is one of the reasons why I bought these because I want to build up a high voltage power supply and hopefully use a load of these. And they should look should look quite good actually. Uh, so. Um, in order to test these, I've actually got this thing rigged up to a um, just actually to a normal bench power supply, which you can see. Which I'll just turn it on. You can. That's better. You can actually see that now. Um, so I've got it rig rigged up to a bench power supply, and what we will do uh, is, is test it to see if we can get it to to glow nice and purple. Um, I actually previously was testing it on this big chunky high voltage transformer in, in a sort of standard half wave rectifier configuration uh, this is actually a, a 600 600 volt transformer and what I've actually discovered with these it's the, uh, the 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 voltage the high voltage is not actually that critical for getting them to light up uh, they actually are um, <coughs> they actually are dependent on the current and it's the current that gets these things to glow quite nicely so before we can uh, rig it up we have to first of all provide a heater source and what I've done here is uh, this is a, just a standard 50 volt amp toroidal transformer and what I've done is basically put some extra wire on it and I've, I've measured it measured the heat the, the voltage at the heater this thing requires 5 volts at about 7 amps so all, all I've done is just wound about 24 turns on that toroidal transformer um, which is actually a, a 100, well, it's 115 oh, 115 uh, and 230 volts in obviously um, <clears throat> and that actually works quite well just for providing uh, the um, the filament uh, current and with with these um, 
types of valves. You, so the anode is the top cap, obviously, and the cathode uh, is is basically connected to the filament. So, in order to get our DC out of this, we have to do we have to tap into the uh, into the one of the windings uh, of the well the winding of the uh, filament, which is basically like a center tap. And from here, this wire is basically uh, the cathode. Uh, so what we'll do is um, connect it up and uh, see what happens. So I'm actually, as I said, I'm, I'm actually going to be using this um, supply up here. That's so you can see it now. I want to get it out of the light. So that's just the bench power supply, which will go up to about 70 volts. And what I'll show, what we'll try and show, we'll, we'll dim the lights and see if we can get it to uh, get it to light up. Anyway, so in order to demonstrate this, what what I've got, uh, as mentioned, the there's the power supply. So the positive is going to the anode of the of the tube, and then the, the cathode is this wire here. And I've got a hundred ohm resistor, which is basically acting as a load. And then that the negative then connects back up to the to the power supply. So there's our tube. Let's turn on the power supply, and we will start off zero volts and I'm going to slowly crank this up until we get some current draw okay so we're starting to get some current draw there at 13 volts and let's have a look at the tube you can just see a little bit of a faint glow there so it, this valve is actually striking at 13 volts and you would have thought that it would probably take something like hundreds of hundreds, 600 up to 1,000 volts to get it to light, but not the case. And basically with these, it's the current that's important. The amount of current is proportional to how bright these things glow. So let's crank up the voltage a bit more and the current. So now it's 200 milliamps, 300 milliamps. Let's go up all the way. This thing will go up to 70 volts. There we go, 72 volts, 600, 600 milliamps. Wow, look at that, that looks quite cool. There we go. That's a mercury art, mercury vapor rectifier in full, at full throttle, I think. I suggest we dim the lights and we can see that a lot better. There we go. I think the camera should pick it up. Now if you actually had that in a transmitter or a power supply of a transmitter, that would actually look quite nice because you'd, if you were running say like SSB or AM, that um, that that uh, vacuum tube would be flickering in time with the, uh, with the mod, which would be quite nice. So I think if we had four of those tubes arranged like in a bridge rectifier configuration in a nice big power supply, I think I think you'll agree that would look quite cool. Slightly more interesting than the uh, than the uh, bog standard silicon diode, but it does come at a cost. You've got to sort out a filament transformer, and uh, you know the space and all the other inconveniences. But at the end of the day, it does look quite cool, and that's what it's all about. Aesthetics are important when you're building stuff. Anyway, so mercury vapor rectifiers, I think that's more or less it. Hope you enjoyed the, uh, the video. Thanks for watching.